Hello everyone. I welcome you all to lead and advise. Today we are going to present a special program of the leader speaks. And do you know who is the leader today to speak about leadership, about the values that a leader has to practice and about her own leadership style. Today we have Mrs. Firdaus Swani with us. Hello Firdaus, how are you? Hello ma'am. Assalamualaikum. Good evening. Good evening. I'm all good. <laughs> Firdaus, first of all, congratulations that you were awarded with the Global Outstanding Leadership Award in Singapore. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored. And you deserve, so you deserve each and every bit of it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank uh, now you. my next question is, can you justify that how you deserve it for my audience? <laughs> how I deserve it? Yes. Uh, the Global Leadership Award. I believe the, this global and leadership in it is something which uh, I have been into since long. Uh, leadership in the sense that I believe uh, that I am able to motivate people to do things which at some point of time, maybe, you know, they uh, uh, don't feel like doing. And I uh, make them do those uh, things in a manner that they even start enjoying it. And we have been doing it with the people, not only at the national level, but people from the other countries as well, internationally as well. And now because of this virtual thing that has happened post-COVID, something that this is a, a blessing that COVID period gave to us, apart from everything else that was there, uh, all the bad things, this is the good thing that happened. So through that, we have been able to even uh, uh, get into contact with other people as well who are in need of that motivation or who are in need of uh, those skill sets which we are able to provide to them. Now, uh, lead a global, so it, it is both global and then the leadership. So uh, I think that is why somehow, uh, now majorly I feel, because I have been saying this, that as a woman uh, and that too, as a Muslim woman, uh, I have been the first one to be doing number of things. So after speaking to a number of people and even sharing the work that I have been doing as a lawyer, as a social activist with a number of uh, females across the globe. So many people are getting inspired by looking at me and they are somehow feeling that, yes, I have broken that ceiling that is there, that a woman wearing a hijab and uh, belonging to uh, actually a uh, society which is considered as conservative in a number of terms, which I myself do not consider, but there is a uh, perception. So I think many of the females that they come to me and they tell me that, you know, they have got inspired. So the, these certain fields like uh, medicine or say uh, the litigation, the law, law, all these fields were untouched by the females. So now I feel that... Uh, once I have come out and I have been able to uh, inspire so many, I can see number of females now there. So uh, that ways I feel, you know, <laughs> not deserving, but yes, somehow, yes, uh, if my name was considered, I am grateful to them. So yes, thank you for that. Firdaus, great job. I know that you deserve it. And uh, you have spoken uh, with humility about yourself, although you are far, far ahead than whatever you have spoken so far. Uh, Firdaus, uh, that's very true that this field was considered to be totally dominated by the male. And uh, you, when you entered in this field, even to my knowledge, in all other states, wherever I go, I found that, yes, there were women, but not in a large number and that too not so prominent because it's also important that whatever good we do, it has to be seen by other women so that they can be inspired. Otherwise, uh, jungle mein more nacha kisne dekha. So if you are a very beautiful dancer and you are dancing uh, in isolation and doing the things alone, nobody is watching you, then that's not the inspiration for the people. But right. you have broken that barrier. You have uh, very proudly accepted your profession, very proudly presented yourself and uh, very skillfully you are doing your job and that is inspiring many, many girls and women. Uh, I know it very well globally. 
So sure. tell us, uh, I know that it is a tedious job doing your own profession and then additional responsibility of uh, motivating other and inspiring others. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you tell me that how do you manage your uh, aspects? <clears throat> Uh, see, uh, first and foremost, I have just thought about it and it's in my mind there, 24 into 7, that apart from being a lawyer and uh, the other things that I am, mother and sister and daughter and wife and all, uh, somehow I feel that uh, I am a woman and whenever somebody is uh, assigning me with a work, so this thought is always there in their subconscious that uh, okay we are assigning this work to this uh, particular woman and um, we don't know whether you know she would be able to uh, deliver it or not because she has responsibility of her family then she um, maybe she is a woman maybe she's timid she's not that assertive she's not uh, that she does not have that kind of anger and all that is needed in such kind of ass ass assignment or maybe she won't be able to spend that much of time and all that so what happens is that at that point of time, I feel that, you know, I will have to do this assignment uh, in a very uh, honest manner and uh, in, in the best way possible. Because one thing is that if I won't do it in a good way, then this man will always, whenever he will be, he would be considering any other woman as well for any assignment, he would think twice or thrice, okay, no, I had given to certain Vani and she could not deliver. Maybe this woman would also not. So first thing is that whatever I am doing, it is actually making a pathway for other females. Now, this thought is something which I felt that this thought should be in every woman's head. That whenever you are doing something, you are actually being watched. And when you are being watched, and if you are not able to deliver it in a proper manner, it somehow snatches away a lot from other females as well. So this is something which uh, somehow pushed me that I should be, whatever thoughts are there, I should be telling it to other people as well. So somehow in squeezing out <laughs> some time, I tend to uh, speak to people. I tend to take out time that uh, this is what is happening and we have to uh, that we have to carry that baton and we have to reach at a point. It is not, see, actually uh, females, it's untapped uh, reservoir of energy. That is a woman. Uh, so nobody wants to deal with her because people have seen a lot less. Uh, why is it that, you know, a child is given to a woman only to take care of? Even if we have nannies and all, mostly it is females. It is because that energy has been already seen by the men, by the women, and by everybody else. That is why she's considered as the best person to be taking care of the children. So similarly, other things as well. Uh, maybe medicine, education, uh, the law, any any other thing. So uh, somehow it pushed me that, you know, if we can do this such a major thing, because I consider that motherhood is the most difficult job. So if we are able to do that, I think we can do anything. So somehow uh, I have been able to just take out that time. Now, uh, the family that I have got, my, uh, Alhamdulillah, my own uh, parents, they always made... Uh, time for me to you know I was never involved in things where uh, I would be wasting time so they always supported me whenever I thought of doing something like this then my husband as well he has been supporting my children as well my in-laws everybody um, and then there are friends and people like you in my life who are helping me so that I can actually uh, put forth my thoughts to the people and somehow uh, I enjoy it, even if I am so tired and, you know, I don't have energy left. But when uh, I feel there is an opportunity to um, sort of raise awareness amongst the females, uh, the women, uh, for, for their empowerment, I just grab that opportunity and I just uh, move uh, further. I want to do a lot. There is a lot to be done more because I have been looking up to you and I, I think <laughs> I should be doing a bit this last dialogue is like it lies last dialogue is my dialogue also always i say you know only 25% of mine i have given to the world is still 75% is inside waiting for the time to give to the world no, you and have given a lot you have given a lot this 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 satisfaction is important because the moment you realize that okay now you are exhausted you have given whatever that you have then naturally that is the end 
So we yeah. to give more to the people. We have to learn more so that we can have more inside us and then give. Uh, cool. Thank you, Firdaus. It was really quite inspiring. Now, Firdaus, coming to the uh, leadership, you know, at times when we are leading a company or leading a group, there are occasions when the people, they criticize us, people, they don't like us, people, they don't like our uh, strategies, our planning, our procedure of working, or even they don't agree with our vision. And you are already leading a team. So how do you handle the criticism at your workplace or even in your personal life? See, I, I somehow feel that criticism is a good thing. Yes, it does take a toll on you. I, I won't say that, you know, it doesn't affect me. But uh, with time, it has started affecting me only for a few minutes. You know, every day we face so much of criticism. Just today, yesterday, every day, there is this criticism. But somehow I take it in my stride. I just feel, okay, uh, see, uh, there are number, uh, the, there are two kinds of criticisms. One is that you understand that this person is actually not uh, willing to work or uh, say this person is uh, maybe jealous of you or uh, this person, uh, uh, may, that is one kind of criticism. Other kind of criticism is that actually there is something which, is, which you are lacking in. And this person has maybe out of jealousy only and has pointed out to that criticism. So we need to dissect it. We should understand that what is going to be a sort of constructive criticism for us and what is going to be just that trolling for us. So now I look into this in uh, this manner only and then I take out the constructive criticism. Okay, this is, okay, they are saying that uh, uh, you should have done it in this manner. Maybe I was actually lacking and then I look into it and I try to reform. But where it is that trolling kind of thing, I just laugh it off now. Yes, it used to affect me a lot, a lot, a lot. See, now uh, the way you asked that you take out time to inspire people and all that. So there was uh, at one point of time, there was this criticism that, oh, she is a lawyer and then she is, um, you know, speaking to so many of these uh, law students, even the students of 12th class, I used to meet them and tell them to the girls that, you know, uh, you should uh, enter, venture into this field. There are many of uh, the girls who are into this field because I sort of tried to tell them that you can be and you know it's very difficult to convince parents also <laughs> to let their daughters get into this field so at that point of time I was criticized a lot uh, for uh, sort of maybe uh, not um, uh, sort of estranged from the religion or uh, maybe um, trying to uh, do something which is not good in the eyes of many people but uh, somehow um, I felt that I am doing right there is a conviction so that is how now coming to the office, my law firm or the people I'm working with, there also I have always allowed my whosoever are my subordinates, I have allowed them to uh, tell me to give the feedback whenever, you know, they feel that I am doing something wrong. Or if somebody has a great idea, I tell them that you share it with me and I even give credit to them. So <clears throat> that way I feel it's all constructive criticism that comes in my office also and Everybody, it's a healthy um, uh, atmosphere there. That is what I have given them. And that is why I was just, my husband was speaking to me and he was telling me that, you know, people who are leaving our office and joining some other places, they tend uh, not to, you know, they tend to come back also at times. <laughs> because the environment and the atmosphere that we have given that, you know, you can, if you are not feeling uh, something is right, you can talk about it. And you can tell us, you can criticize. If they go, when they go to other place, they start doing the same thing. They tell them you are fired, <laughs> get out. <laughs> so that's also there. Now, uh, uh, I feel, uh, you know, as a mother also, I was criticized a lot. Uh, because um, many people said, you know, oh, that she's leaving behind the child and then she's going for her uh, matters or cases or all that. So that also sort of affected me a lot, I would say. I, I wouldn't shy away from saying this. But at that point of time, one day my daughter, she saw, uh, I was on television for something and she saw and she was so happy to see that my mother is there on uh, the in television. And thereafter, whenever, you know, she would, she would see any woman on the banner outside, these politicians and anybody, she would say, Mama. So <laughs> I thought even she is expecting that I should be doing. So I tried to create a balance instead of getting affected by the criticism. I asked my mother for help, my mother-in-law for help, my husband. I um, sort of, we made 
out a plan and uh, you know that's how it's working it's very difficult it is not easy uh, maybe while i'm speaking it, it sounds that you know i'm having that gala type uh, you have to put in 24 hours into work you know office work then you have child then you have own your own space you want your me time also but at the same time i feel all this is needed because at the end of the day this is the life that you would be living and ultimately when you would go to another world then you have to just sleep and rest <laughs> so i think the maximum we can give to this world we should be giving we should be giving and criticism just okay many people say good things i mean whatever they say that is all um, right but many people they would just only try to disbalance you i have learned you know i i always say that i put those blinkers and i just look forward neither dekhna nor udhar dekhna because now i have seen you know when they would see me they would say wow hum bahut wo hello kaise hain aap these are the same people who were criticizing me you know now they would see that oh she is doing good then they would be ha we know her we know her many people i don't know many of my relatives now because of whatever reason you know ha <laughs> So uh, and, you know the god yeah. has uh, given us extra power we can say or maybe extra strength that we are able to do and balance the things even uh, when uh, i look up at my profession so going abroad and been working in a foreign land it was always being criticized but i feel very uh, proud of myself that whenever they are in need Uh, in the in my uh, relatives among my relatives so i am the first one whom they look up and then ask for the assistance and help then i at that time i don't feel bad i feel that yes god has made me in such a position that where i can um, extend my helping hand to them and that's really a great blessings from allah almighty so uh, that's life that's life it is just a uh, human nature that uh, first they criticize and then they accept the things so we have to take it in a constructive way So thank you for that it was very nice talking to you thank and you so uh, I'm very proud of you you are an asset for this world and keep going keep growing and keep spreading the goodness around the globe and uh, wish you all I the need best. your blessings need your blessings thank you always thank you. bless you in all your endeavors thank you very thank much you. take care bye bye